Yashar, Jasher 8. And it was in the night that Avram was born, that all the servants of Tarach and all the wise men of Nimrod and his conjurers came and ate and drank in the house of Tarach, and they rejoiced with him on that night. And when all the wise men and conjurers went out from the house of Tarach, they lifted up their eyes toward heaven that night to look at the stars. And they saw, and behold, one very large star came from the east and ran in the heavens. And he swallowed up the four stars from the four sides of the heavens. And all the wise men of the king and his conjurers were astonished at the sight, and the sages understood this matter, and they knew its import. And they said to each other, This only betokens the child that has been born to Tarach this night who will grow up and be fruitful and multiply and possess all the earth, he and his children forever. And he and his seed will slay great kings and inherit their lands. And the wise men and conjurers went home that night and in the morning all these wise men and conjurers rose up early and assembled in an, an appointed house. And they spoke and said to each other, Behold, the sight that we saw last night is hidden from the king. It has not been made known to him. And should this thing get known, to the king in the latter days, he will say to us, Why have you concealed this matter from me? And then we shall all suffer death. Therefore, now let us go and tell the king the sight which we saw and the interpretation thereof, and we shall then remain clear. And they did so, and they all went to the king and bowed down to him in the ground. And they said, May the king live. May the king live. We heard that a son was born to Tarach, the son of Nehor the prince of your host. And we yesternight came to his house, and we ate and drank and rejoiced with him that night. And when your servants went out from the house of Tarach to go to our respective homes to abide there for the night, we lifted up our eyes to heaven and we saw a great star coming from the east. And the same star ran with great speed and swallowed up the four great stars from the four sides of the heavens. And your servants were astonished at the sight which we saw and were greatly terrified and we made our judgment upon the sight and knew by our wisdom the proper interpretation thereof that this thing applies to the child that is born to Tarach, who will grow up and multiply greatly and become powerful and kill 
all the kings of the earth and inherit all their lands, he and his seed forever. And now, our Lord and King, behold, we have truly acquainted you with that, with what we have seen concerning this child. If it seems good to the king to give his father value for this child, we will slay him before he shall grow up and increase in the land, and his evil increase against us that we and our children perish through his evil. And the king heard their words, and they seemed good in his sight. And he sent and called for Tarach, and Tarach came before the king. And the king said to Tarach, I've been told that a son was yesternight born to you, and after this manner was observed in the heavens at his birth. And now, therefore, give me the child, that we may slay him before his evil springs up against us. And I will give you for his value your house full of silver and gold. And Tarach answered the king and said to him, My lord and king, I have heard your words, and your servant shall do all that his king desires. But, my lord and king, I will tell you what happened to me yesternight, that I may see what advice the king will give his servant. And then I will answer the king upon what he has just spoken. And the king said, Speak. And Tarach said to the king, Aon, son of Mored, came to me yesternight, saying, Give unto me the great and beautiful horse that the king gave you, and I will give you silver and gold and straw and provender for its value. Then I said to him, Wait till I see the king concerning your words, and behold, whatsoever the king says, that will I do. And now, my lord and king, behold, I have made this thing known to you, and the advice which my king will give unto his servant, that will I follow. And the king heard the words of Tarach, and his anger was kindled, and he considered him in the light of a fool. And the king answered Tarach, and he said to him, Are you so silly? ignorant or deficient in understanding to do this thing, to give your beautiful horse for silver and gold or even for straw and provender. Are you so short of silver and gold that you should do this thing because you could not obtain straw and provender to feed your horse? And what is silver and gold to you, or straw and provender, that you should give away that fine horse which I gave you, like which there is none to be had on the whole earth? And the king left off speaking, and Tarach answered the king, saying, Like unto this has the king spoken to his servant, I beseech you, my lord and king, what is this which you did say unto me, saying, Give your son, that we may slay him, and I will give you silver and gold for his value? What shall I do with silver and gold after the death of my son? Who shall inherit me? Surely then at my death the silver and gold will return to my king who gave it. And when the king heard the words of Tarach and the parable which he brought concerning the king, it grieved him greatly, and he was vexed at this thing, and his anger burned within him. 
And Tarach saw that the anger of the king was kindled against him. And he answered the king, saying, All that I have is in the king's power. Whatsoever the king desires to do to his servant, let him do. Yea, even my son, he is in the king's power. Without value in exchange, he and his two brothers that are older than he. And the king said to Tarach, No, but I will purchase your younger son for a price. And Tarach answered the king, saying, I beseech you, my lord and king, to let your servant speak a word before you. And let the king hear the word of his servant. And Tarach said, Let my king give me three days' time till I consider this matter within myself and consult with my family concerning the words of my king. And he pressed the king greatly to agree to this. And the king hearkened to Tarach, and he did so, and he gave him three days' time. And Tarach went out from the king's presence, and he came home to his family, and spoke to them all the words of the king, and the people were greatly afraid. And it was in the third day that the king sent to Tarach, saying, Send me your son for a price as I spoke to you. And should you not do this, I will send and slay all you have in your house, so that you shall not even have a dog remaining. And Tarach hastened, as the king was urgent, rather as the thing was urgent from the king. And he took a child from one of his servants, which his handmaid had borne to him that day. And Tarach brought the child to the king and received value for him. And Yahuwah was with Tarach in this matter, that Nimrod might not cause Avram's death. And the king took the child from Tarach and with all his might dashed his head to the ground. For he thought it had been Avram. And this was concealed from him from that day. And it was forgotten by the king, as it was the will of providence, not to suffer Avram's death. And Tarach took Avram, his son, secretly, together with his mother and nurse, and he concealed them in a cave. And he brought them their provisions monthly. And Yahuwah was with Avram in the cave, and he grew up. And Avram was in the cave ten years. And the king and his princes, soothsayers and sages, thought that the king had killed Avram.